Hello there friends, it's Ashley here from the Loopy Lamb and theloopylamb.com and thanks so much for stopping by the channel. It's week 25 of the 2023 Amigurumi Advent Calendar Crochet Along and this week we're going to be working on a part of a four part outfit for our dolls. We're going to be making an elf costume. I thought this would be so fun to make for the holiday season and it's going to be great for the advent calendar. So this week we're going to be making the shorts component of our elf costume for our doll and then later we'll be making the hat, shirt, and shoes. The shoes is a bonus pattern that I've included and we'll cover more about that in a future video. So let's cover what materials you'll need to follow along with today's tutorial. To follow along with today's tutorial, you'll need the following materials. You'll need a worsted weight yarn in your color of preference. And this is Brava worsted weight that I'm using here today from We Crochet, and I'm using the color avocado. You'll need a three and a half millimeter or E crochet hook or whatever hook size that you've been using throughout the crochet along to match the gauge given in the pattern. If you're just finding us now, I recommend taking a look at the written pattern, which is available free on my blog, and I've linked to that in the description box below, and you'll find all the gauge information that you need there. You'll need a couple of stitch markers, a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, one nine millimeter button, and a sewing needle and some sewing thread in a color that's close or to or matches the yarn color that you're using. So let me clear my workspace here, and we'll hop on into crocheting a pair of elf shorts for our amigurumi dolls. To start our elf shorts, we're going to need to create a slip knot. So to do that, I'm going to lay the yarn across my palm like this and pin the tail of it down with my finger or my thumb here. Then I'm going to wrap it around my fingers around the back and bring it to the front to create that X. Then we're going, while holding onto the yarn, we're going to flip our hand and then we'll have two strands across our hand. And then I'm going to pin the yarn down between my ring finger and my middle finger. Now at this point, you can either use your fingers or your crochet hook for, to make it easier for you to see, I'll use my crochet hook. So we're going to insert our hook under the first strand and over the second. Then we're just going to grab that second strand and bring it under the first, okay? Then we're going to just very gently transfer all of the yarn off of our fingers and onto the crochet hook. Then pull up on the crochet hook and down on the yarn to tighten up our knot. Then grabbing the uh, working end of the yarn. We're going to pull that gently until the knot is up and uh, close to the crochet hook. And you want to make sure it's not too tight because you want to be able to move that back and forth. And now we're ready to start our shorts. So when we're crocheting these elf shorts for our dolls, we, they are worked from the bottom up. So we're going to work each pant leg and then we'll join the pant legs and cr finish uh, creating our shorts for the uh, doll. So to start, we're going to need to create a chain of 20. So we're going to yarn over hook and pull that loop through the loop on your hook to create your first chain. That's a chain one. So we're going to yarn over again and pull that yarn through the loop on our hook. And that is a second chain. And we're going to continue this yarn over and pulling through the loop on our hook until we have 20 chains. So if you'd like to pause your video and do 20 chains, I'll meet you back here in just a moment. All right, so I'm back and I've done my 20 chains. If you're not uh, familiar with how to count your chains, I'll show you that quickly. So you would turn your piece so you can see these little V's, right? If you've got your work facing like this, you need to turn it around so you can see each of these V's. Now, starting with your counting from your slip knot over toward in the direction of your hook, you're going to count each one of those V's. And if you count all of those V's and you have 20, then you should have your correct amount of chains. And now when we're counting, we never count the yarn on our hook as a chain. So now what we're going to do is we're going to join our first chain to our last chain to form a ring. Now we wanna make sure that we don't twist our chain when we're doing this. So what I like to do is I like to hold my chain taut like this and then I place my finger in the middle and then I fold the chain in half. Okay, and then I'm going to insert my hook into that first chain here, or inserting my hook. And then now I know that there isn't going to be any twists in that chain. So now we're going to do our slip knot. So we're going to yarn over hook and pull that loop through both loops that were on our hook. And now we have joined 
our two ends to form a ring. Now we're going to yarn over and chain up one. Okay, now we're ready to start crocheting our first round of our pant legs. I recommend bringing in a stitch marker and having that handy because we're going to be needing that moving forward to help us keep track of our stitches. So working into the first chain here, we're going to work a single crochet. So inserting our hook into that first chain, yarn over hook and pull up a loop. You should have two loops on your hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through both loops on our hook. And that is our first single crochet completed. And now the pattern says we're going to work one single crochet into each stitch around. So working into the next chain here, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. There should be two loops on your hook. Then we're gonna yarn over and pull through both loops. And that is our next single crochet. And again, we're just gonna continue this into each of these chains around and working that one single crochet into each chain. So if you'd like to pause your video and work one single crochet into each chain around, I'll meet you back here at the end of the round to show you how we're going to finish off. All right, so I'm back and I've worked one single crochet into each of those chains and I'm at the end of the round. Now we're going to do a slip stitch join to join our last stitch here to the first stitch of the round. So we're going to insert our hook under both loops of that first stitch that we did here. Then we're going to yarn over hook and pull up a loop. Okay. Then we're going to pull that loop through the loop that was already on our hook and that is our slip stitch join. At the end of this round, you should have 20 single crochets. And if you're not familiar with how to count those stitches, turn your work again so you can see those Vs just like we did with the chain, and you're just going to count each one of those Vs around, and the slip stitch never counts as a stitch, all right? And so if you count 20 Vs, you have the correct amount of stitches. So now we're ready to move into round two. To do that, we're going to yarn over hook, and pull up a loop to chain one. Then we're going to turn our work. And this is where we're going to use our stitch marker. You don't have to do this, this is optional, but um, I find that when you have your slip stitch join, it can be easy to either lose or pick up extra stitches as you're working because we're going to be working in turned rounds and that slip stitch can make things a little harder to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this stitch marker in the first stitch of the previous round here. I'm gonna lock that into place. So that way I know wh where my last stitch of this next round will be. And I know that I that's where I need to stop, right? Let me put my hook back here into my chain and I'm ready to go. So for round two, we're going to work one single crochet into each stitch around. So you're going to take a look at your previous round stitches, find that V, and you're going to insert your hook under both of those loops. Yarn over, pull up a loop then yarn over and pull through both loops. And that's your first single crochet completed. And then just like we did in the previous round, we're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch around. If you'd like to pause your video and work one single crochet into each stitch around, I'll meet you back here at the last stitch of the round to show you what we're going to be doing next. All right, so I'm back and I've just done my last stitch of the round and I'm ready to join my last stitch to my first stitch with a slip stitch. So inserting my hook into the first stitch there, yarn over and pull up a loop, then pull that loop through the loop on your hook and that is your slip stitch join. Now for rounds three and four, we're going to do the exact same instructions that we did for round two. We're going to yarn over and chain up one and turn our work. And then we're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch around. And at the end of the round, we'll join our last stitch to our first stitch with a slip stitch. So if you'd like to pause your video and do rounds three and four in the same way we did round two, I'll meet you back here in just a moment to show you what we're going to do at the end of round four. All right, so I'm back and I'm at the end of round four. And so I've done my slip stitch join. And then what you're going to do is you're gonna cut your yarn and then pull your yarn all the way through that stitch. And then you can set your 
pant leg aside because now you need to work on pant leg two. So to do pant leg two, rewind the video and watch the instructions for pant leg one again. But when you get to the end of round four, don't finish off. Meet me here at the end of round four after you're done your second pant leg and then I'll show you how we're gonna join these pant legs together. So I'll meet you back here in just a moment. All right, so I'm back and I just finished my second pant leg and we're ready to join our two pant legs together. Again, at the end of round four, after you're done your second pant leg, we're not gonna finish off like with we did with the first leg, we're going to join our pant legs together now. So at this point, we're going to yarn over and chain up two. So we're gonna yarn over and pull through the loop once, yarn over and pull through the loop twice. And now we're going to grab our first pant leg here. And we're going to start working into the top of our first pant leg. And I had left a stitch marker here in that last stitch of the round. Let me get that out of the way. And so now we're after we've done our chain two, we're going to insert a hook into the last stitch we did in pant leg one. And we're going to single crochet into that stitch. So we're gonna yarn over and then yarn over and pull through both loops. Okay, so at this point, let me get my little yarn tails out of the way so you can see what we've got here. So at this point, you can see that our pant legs are joined together with this chain two. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this stitch marker and I'm going to place it into the second chain that I created. Okay. Because in subsequent rounds, that is going to be our first stitch moving forward. So I'm just gonna place that there temporarily. And then we're going to continue to join our pant legs. So we're going to work one single crochet into each stitch around this first pant leg that we created. And now if you have any yarn tails hanging it, uh, down, this is a good chance to crochet over them as you're working one single crochet into each of these stitches. You can see I'm just holding my yarn tail here behind my work and just crocheting over them as I create my single crochets. All right, so I've worked all the way around my piece and at this point, you should have 20 single crochets all the way around your piece. And so I'm just gonna take a moment to, to count there because I didn't have a stitch marker, I always like to take a moment here to count my stitches to make sure that I don't have any extra. All right, so I have my 20 single crochets and now I'm going to continue to move on. So now we're going to have to work into these chains we created to uh, essentially cross the bridge from one pant leg to the other. So this stitch marker will get in the way. I'm just gonna move it temporarily out of the way. So when you when we do these chains, they can kind of um, be tricky to see when you're working into them. So um, I like to go through the bottom of the chains. Okay, so you can kind of see the Vs here. And um, I find going in through the bottom to be easier. So we're just going to insert our hook, however is most comfortable for you, through that first chain. Here we go. I did those chains a little too tightly. All right, so I'm, insert, I'm in my first chain here and then I'm just going to single crochet into that first chain. And then again, into that next chain single crochet. So I'm going to place that stitch marker that I moved out of the way back into that second chain here. And now it will stay there until I'm ready to move it again. All right, so now that I've done my uh, single crochets in each of those two chains, we're going to work one single crochet into each stitch around pant leg two. So now that we're working into pant leg two, I know that this is a chain, and so I'm gonna work into that first stitch and single crochet. And then again, working one single crochet into each of these stitches. All right, so I've done my single crochets into each of those stitches along the second pant leg. And now I'm going to work one single crochet into that first chain. Now that can be a little tricky to see, but thankfully we put that stitch marker in here. And so that's my second chain and this is my first. So I'm just gonna insert my hook into that chain and single crochet. Oops, 
There we go. And single crochet. Now, at this point, I always like to take a moment and count my stitches around to make sure I have the correct amount because doing the that joining there, it is easy to pick up or uh, drop stitches or lose them, I should say. So take a moment and count your stitches around. You should have 44 stitches. And that second chain that we marked with our stitch marker, even though there's not technically a stitch in it, we count it as a stitch. So counting this first or the second chain here with the stitch marker, count that as your first stitch and then count all the way around and make sure you've got 44 stitches before moving on. All right, so I've got my 44 stitches and now I'm going to join my last stitch to that marked chain with a slip stitch. So inserting my hook into that marked stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull that loop through the loop on your hook to join. And now we're ready to move into round six. Now rounds six through 14 are all done the same way. What we're gonna do is we're gonna yarn over and chain up one and turn our work. And then we're going to work one single crochet into each stitch around. So if you'd like to pause your video and work one single crochet into each stitch around, I'll meet you at the end of this round to show you how we're going to finish it off. All right, so I'm at the end of round six and I just wanted to remind you that we're finishing off round six, six by placing our last single crochet into that second chain that we created that had the slip uh, stitch marker in it before. That is where our last stitch will be placed. Now that we've worked that last stitch, we're just going to join our last stitch to our first stitch with a slip stitch. And now we're ready to move on to round seven. So round seven through 14 are all done the same way as round six. You chain up one, turn your work, and then work one single crochet into each stitch around. Now, again, just as a reminder, if you find that the slip stitch makes it harder for you to see where to work, make sure you put that stitch marker into the last stitch of, sorry, the first stitch of the previous round, okay? So if you'd like to pause your video and do rounds seven through 14, working one single crochet into each stitch around, and then joining your last stitch to your first stitch with a slip stitch, I'll meet you back here at the end of round 14 and show you how we're moving into round 15. All right, so I'm back and I just finished my last stitch of round 14 and I'm ready to move into round 15. So at the end of around 14, you should still have those 44 single crochets. You should not have any changes in your stitch count. So moving into round 15, we're going to yarn over and chain up one and turn our work. Now we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next four stitches. So here's our first. There's our third and our fourth. Now that we have our four single crochets, we're going to create the first strap on our shorts. So we're going to chain a, do a chain of 34. So yarn over and pull through the loop, there's one. Yarn over, pull through the loop, there's two. We're going to continue this yarn over and pull through until we have 34 chains. All right, so I have my chain of 34 and I've turned my work so I'm working back up the chain we just created. And now we're going to start in the seventh chain from the hook. So when we're doing that, again, we never count the yarn on our hook as a chain and we're going to count over seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And I'm gonna place my finger right next to that seventh chain so I know where to insert my hook. So inserting my hook into that seventh chain, I'm going to do a slip stitch. So inserting into the chain, yarn over and pull up a loop. Then pull that loop through the loop that was already on your hook. And that's your slip stitch completed. And now by doing that, we have created a buttonhole for the strap on our shorts. And now we're going to work one slip stitch into each of the chains we created. So into the next chain, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull that through the loop on your hook. So if you'd like to pause your video and work one slip stitch into each of the chains we created, I'll meet you back here at the end of the chain to show you how we're going to proceed with the rest of round 15. 
All right, so I'm back and I just finished my last slip stitch and this is what your strap should look like at this point. You've got one slip stitch into every chain you created, except for these skipped chains at the beginning that will become a buttonhole. And now we're ready to continue working across the top of our piece. So now we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next 36 stitches. So working into the next available stitch in the body of your piece, you're going to work one single crochet. And this first single crochet helps to join your strap back to your shorts. And then we're just going to continue working one single crochet into now e into each of the next 35 stitches. We've done one, so now it's 34. So if you'd like to pause your video and work your 36 stitches, you can meet me back here when you've done 36 stitches after your slip stitch strap. All right, so I'm back and I've done my 36 single crochets and I'm ready to create my second strap. So again, to make it even, we're going to do another chain of 34. So we're gonna yarn over and pull through the loop. There's one, yarn over and pull through the loop. There's two, and we're just gonna continue this yarn over and pull through the loop until we have 34 chains. All right, so I'm back and I've done my 34 chains. And again, we've turned, so we're going to be working back down the chain we created. So starting in the seventh chain from the hook, we're going to place a slip stitch. So again, we never count the yarn on our hook as a, a loop or a chain, and we're going to count, start counting here, and we're gonna count over seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so I'm going to place my thumb next to that chain, and then I'm going to insert my hook into the seventh chain there. And then we're going to do that slip stitch. And again, we've got another buttonhole. And we're going to just work one slip stitch into each of the chains back up to the body of our piece. So if you'd like to pause your video and work one slip stitch into each of the chains, the remaining chains that we created, I'll meet you back here in just a moment at the end of the chain to show you how we're going to proceed working into the body of our piece next. All right, so I'm back and I just finished my last slip stitch in my second strap and we're ready to proceed with the rest of the stitches in round 15. So working into the next available stitch in the body of your piece, you're going to work one single crochet into that stitch. And again, this single crochet joins your strap back to the top of your piece. And then you're going to work one single crochet into each of the next three stitches. And now that we've got that done, we're going to join our last stitch to our first stitch here with a slip stitch. And then we're going to cut our yarn, leaving a tail of at least four to six inches here. And then we're going to pull it all the way through to finish off our piece. And then you'll just use your tapestry needles to weave in your ends. Now, once you're done weaving in your ends, what you'll do is you'll place your piece flat on a surface like this. I'm gonna move it down a little bit so it's easier to see. And then you'll take your straps and fold them over so the buttonholes touch the front of the piece. And that is where you're going to sew your buttons on with your needle and thread. You're going to sew it on to the place where your straps meet the front of your shorts. Now you can try these on to the doll and then put the straps over the shoulders to find out where you'll um, want your, uh, goodness, your button placement. Just like here in my original sample here, you can see that my uh, buttons here are near the top of the piece, so not too far down. And the further down you put them, then the tighter the straps will be. But um, near the top is where they're supposed to be placed here. And that's it. That's how you crochet your little elf shorts. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button and please consider subscribing to this channel. If you have any questions or comments, I would absolutely love to hear from you. Please leave them in the comment section below and I'd be happy to help you any way that I can. So if you enjoy free crochet patterns, please don't forget to check out my blog, theloopylamb.com, where we've got tons of free crochet patterns, many of which have step-by-step -step tutorials just like this one. So thanks so much for watching, friends. Happy hooking, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.